Okay, so today we're going to be using our muffin tin and we are going to be making some individual quiches. And I'm gonna make this simple by using some pre-made dough. So, uh, before we get going, I've preheated my oven to 375. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray my muffin tin so I don't forget to do it. So we're just gonna give this a good little spray. Make sure my quiches don't stick. And then we can set this aside. Okay, so I'm going to flour my board just lightly so that my dough doesn't stick. And I'm going to use a biscuit cutter to get my shapes of my dough. So I wanna try and maximize the amount I can get out of here. They don't have to be exact, but we, they don't have to be perfect. These are not going in a showcase or anything, but we want them to be as uniform as possible so they'll cook down as nicely as they can. All right, so you know these doughs, if you buy them in the store, they come in a pack of two, so we're gonna use the other pack to get to our 12. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but I do wanna show you the basics. We're gonna take that dough and we're gonna press that dough into our pans. So we're gonna get that dough down in there. We'll press them all in there really good in a minute after I get the rest of this dough cut. And I'm not worried that it overlaps a little bit because we can, we can fix that as we fill the cup. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't like to waste anything, which normally I am, you can simply just take this dough and then take a rolling pin and re-roll it and get another, another uh, quiche cup out of that. I'm gonna set this aside just for the purpose of time and getting this video done. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut, I need five. So we're gonna cut one, two, three, four, five. All right, we'll get the rest of those in our pan and then we'll show you what the next step is. What I wanna to try to do is bring the sides up as far as I can like this one looks like it's a little lopsided, so we'll try and bring the sides up as far as as far as they can go. It's not gonna hurt if your egg has a little crustiness on the top, but the idea, I think, for quiche is that it sits all inside that lovely crust. All right. So there we have, and I'm just gonna press where it overlapped. I don't know if you can see me do that. I'm just gonna press down, because remember, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be a good vessel for that egg and all the wonderful goodness that we're gonna put in there. All right, so now we have these set up. I'm gonna set them aside so we get the next step ready. All right, let me move my cutting board out of the way. What I've done is I've put eight eggs in here. If we need more, we'll add more. But I'm gonna add in a half a cup of milk. You could also use cream. I'm gonna give this a good little whisk. And I did it in the measuring cup only because I think it's going to be easier for me to pour into the muffin tin. Now here comes the fun part. Because everybody in the family likes different ingredients, you can mix in whatever ingredients you like. So I have some Parmesan and some mozzarella. I have some pepper jack. I have some bacon. I have ham. I sauteed some mushrooms, some peppers and onions. 
I also even have some tomatoes. So look at all the fun things we're gonna be able to make. Now we don't wanna put everything inside every cup, but we'll do some with a few of the flavors. And you can even add in some fresh herbs, like I have some basil and I have some scallion or green onion as a lot of people call it. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to my eggs. We're just gonna give them another good whisk to make sure I've got them all incorporated properly. There we go. I think those look good. And now we'll bring back our pan and we'll start to assemble the ingredients in the bottom first. I like to start with the um, biggest items on the bottom, like for instance, this cheese is rather chunky, so if we're gonna use the pepper jack in a couple of them, I'm gonna put the cheese in the bottom. I know a lot of people like the cheese on the top. For this one, for these chunky cheeses, I'm gonna use them in the bottom because I wanna make sure that they get incorporated well. So the one with the pepper jack I'm thinking would be nice with a little bit of ham in there. Just put in a few pieces of ham. That ham and cheese will melt nicely together. And maybe even, uh, let's say a tomato. I think tomatoes would be good in there. Let's put in a little bit of tomato. And then we can do a different flavor. Now I'm not gonna put mushrooms in these because I know my husband will eat those, but he, he won't like the ones with the mushroom. So let's do mushroom next so we don't forget. Let's do mushroom. And these three. Okay. And I like bacon with mushroom. If I had spinach, I would have put spinach in there, but let's do a couple of pieces of bacon in there. I'm getting hungry thinking about this because these are going to be delicious. Now for this one, I don't want to do the pepper jack, but I'm thinking a little bit of mozzarella on the top and maybe even just a little bit of that Parmesan. All right. So what if you don't have a meat eater in your house? Well, remember we've got the nice little peppers and onions. We can put those in. We can make these veggie cups. Be just as nice. Add those in. And then we could put some Parmesan, mozzarella, or you could do pepper jack. We're gonna do Parmesan and mozzarella in these. And you see how they're, they're getting quite full, right? So that's the idea. We wanna make sure that we've got plenty of items inside there that will be delicious. And now that I'm thinking about this, maybe this pepper jack should have some peppers and onions in it just for color. Look, at, doesn't that look pretty? All right, so we'll just put a few in. Very nice. All right, now these last ones, um, let's do um, tomato and a little pepper and onion. And let's put some ham in there. And just so you're wondering about cross-contamination, I will tell you that I'm using up all these ingredients together in a whole big quiche, whatever's left. I just chopped a little extra today. All right, so, and now let's put some mozzarella in there. Make it nice and stringy and a little Parmesan for flavor. And we're good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our egg mixture and we are gonna go ahead and we are going to pour into our cups. Make sure that they're about three quarters of the way full. Once that settles in there. And I'll put the exact recipe on the website so you know how many eggs to use for this many cups. Especially if you're gonna fill them as full as I did because I like them full. These are gonna puff up in the oven. So that's why we don't wanna go over. 
we can help it. We want these to settle in at just about full, but not quite full. All right, as you can see, I have some egg mixture left over. So with that, I'm gonna be making one big, um, probably frittata with what's left, and we'll have that today. And then these we're gonna be able to take and freeze. Now, I think these might be nice with a little bit of these with some green onion. Just for color and for maybe even these and then the last two actually I'll do some here I'll do basil and some of the others how about a little piece of basil in there you can break it up if you want a little bit of basil for flavor and if you want you can add another little bit of black pepper to the top If you're somebody who likes salt, you could add more salt to them. We tend to. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit because I already did some of my egg mixture. I'm going to cheese add salt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get these into the oven. Look how beautiful these are already. And we are going to bake them at that preheated oven at 375 for 25 minutes. And then we're going to check them to make sure our egg is cooked all the way through. Thanks for watching. How to make a great breakfast that you can have all week long or feed the family. So we pulled these out of the oven. We pulled these out of the oven at about 18 to 22 minutes. I lost track. I will make them again just to make sure. But I checked them at 18 and they look like they could go a little further. But what I want to show you is, you just want to make sure all your egg is cooked. And funny enough, I forgot to put egg in one of them. Oh, that's kind of funny. Oh, well. So we will end up with 11 of these amazing quiches. And guess what? I'll eat the 12th one. We know I'm going to eat that. That's my test one.